So let us start, right. So how do we compute the attention matrix? You have Q, you have K and then you compute QK transpose, right. Now let us divide this into uh, blocks, right. So what is the block here? What is I'm, what am I doing here? Uh, what is the Q matrix? The Q matrix has T rows, so it corresponding to the T tokens and for each row it has a DK representation, DK sized representation for that token, right. So now I have divided into three blocks. So these are T by 3 tokens, these are three T by 3 tokens and these are T by 3 tokens, right. And now what is the K matrix? The K matrix also corresponds, uh, also has like one column for each of the T tokens. So now if I am going to divide the um, K matrix also into three parts, so this corresponds to the first T by 3 tokens, this corresponds to the next T by 3 tokens and the next T by 3 tokens, right. And now in the full attention I do a T T square computation where I compute the attention between everyone, but in block attention I might want to do that this block only interacts with this block, right. So the first T by 3 tokens only attend to the first T by 3 tokens. The next T by 3 tokens only attend to the next T by 3 tokens and the last T by 3 tokens only attend to the last T by 3 tokens. This is one possibility, but I could also do something different here, right, and let us see what else I could do. But you first get the idea that now since I am using a block attention, the, the, to the total number of tokens have been divided into three blocks, hence the corresponding matrices have also been divided into three blocks, right. So now what I could choose to do is the following. Right. So, if I do all the computations, if I multiply Q0, so if this this part of the T square matrix, right, comes by multiplying Q0 by K0, right, this part comes by multiplying Q0 by K1, the last part comes by multiplying Q0 by K2, right. So, that is these 3, uh, 3 into 3 combinations, right, are the 9 squares that you see here. This comes from basic block uh, method for multiplying matrices. That is how you do block matrix multiplication, but we are not interested in filling the full matrix. Right? That is the whole point, right. I mean, just because I am doing block multiplication that does not help. I do not want to fill the full matrix. I only want certain tokens to focus on certain uh, subset of the total number of tokens. So this is what I want, right. I want the remaining matrix to be sparse. So now in this spatial case, what am I saying that I want these T by 3 tokens. Let me just use the original color. I, I want these T by 3 tokens to interact with these T by 3 tokens. Right? So the first T by 3 tokens are going to interact with the first T by 3 tokens. But then the second T by 3 tokens, since I am making them uh, interact with uh, K2, what am I doing here? I am saying that these T by 2, T by 3 tokens will interact with these T by 3 tokens, right. So it is not necessary though it looks like all of these T by 3 tokens are not going to pay attention to each other, they are going to pay attention to the last T by 3 tokens. So if you take one token from here, it is going to attend to all of those and those T attention weights will get computed, sorry, rather, uh, T by 3 attention weights will get computed. Similarly, the second token from this T by 3 block is going to comp, uh, pay attention to the all the T by 3 tokens in the last block, right. That is what this part is indicating. And then finally, uh, the tokens in this block are going to interact with this block, right, and that is why only these uh, values will get computed, right. So remember each of these squares is T by 3 cross T by 3 and the total matrix of course is T by 3, right, so uh, sorry T cross T. So in this case how many uh, entries am I computing? So this is T square by 9 this block is also t square by 9 and this block is also t square by 9. So if I add them up, I am actually computing 3 t square by 9, that means t square by 3 entries, right. So I am not computing the full t square, I am just computing uh, one third of that, right. So that is what is happening here, uh, where 3 is the block size, right. So it looks like t square gets divided by the number of blocks. So the larger the number of blocks, more is the reduction that I will get in the number of entries that I have to compute, right. So that is what is happening here. I am allowing blocks of tokens to interact with other blocks of tokens, not with all the tokens in the uh, sentence, okay.
or I could have used this pattern. In this pattern, this is what I had explained earlier. This was one possibility. So I can use these, play around with these permutations, right? So what this means is that if I have, say, eight heads, right? For one head, I could use the combination that 0, 0, 0 1, 1, 2, 2. That means all the tokens in the block 0 will interact with all tokens in block 0, all tokens in block 1 will interact with all tokens in block 1 and all tokens in block 2 will interact with all tokens in block 2. For another uh, attention head, I could use a different pattern. I could say all tokens in block 0 interact with all tokens in block 1. They don't interact with each other, right? Then all tokens in block 1 interact with all tokens in block 2. They don't interact with each other. And all tokens in block 2 interact with all tokens in block 2. So there are many of these permutations that I could do. And that's what was being mentioned in the previous slide. It will become more clear on the next slide, right? So consider this permutation. So you have n blocks. So there are, consider one, there are n factorial permutations that you could have. So consider pi to be one such permutation of these n numbers, right? Um, so let the kth element of this permutation, right? So if you make the permutation, you could write, uh, so the actual numbers are 0, 1, 2, 3, up to n minus 1. If you permute them, you would get some random ordering of that. So it could be 2, 4, 1, 3, 7, 8, n minus 1 and so on, right? So that in that random permutation, uh, we are calling the kth element as pi of k, right? And now we define a masking matrix M such that uh, the ijth entry of that matrix is equal to 1 under certain condition. I will come back to that condition and it is going to be 0 otherwise. So, so it looks like there is a mask matrix which is going to have some 0 values and some 1 values. And now the attention mechanism is the following, right? So it is q to k transpose and the Hadamard product of that with m. So what does that mean? m is going to have some zeros and some 1s. So if you have the original QK transpose matrix, which was all values were non-zero because all tokens were interacting with all other tokens. Now, if you are going to do a Hadamard product with M, which has some zeros, then some of these values are going to get zeroed out, right? So that's what is happening here. And uh, <coughs> yeah, so let's, let's look at this as a concrete example and I'm sure you will understand after that. So suppose the context length is 15 and the number of blocks is 3. So there are three factorial permutations possible. So uh, this is what we could have. So one scenario could be that these are the non-zero weights and everything that is black is uh, zero weights. The other scenario could be that these are the non-zero weights. So what is happening here? The first t by 3 tokens are interacting with the first t by 3 tokens. Here the next t by 3 tokens are interacting with the last set of three by t uh, by 3 tokens and then the last t by 3 tokens are interacting with the middle set of t by 3 tokens, right? No other interactions are happening between the tokens. In particular, this, uh, see the middle t by 3 tokens are not interacting with the middle 3 by 3 tokens. Hence, the middle t by 3 cross t by 3 uh, attention matrix or that part of the attention matrix is 0, right? That's what's happening here. Uh, so here, let's consider what in terms of permutation, right? So here the permutation was 0, 1, 2, right? So the permutation is same as the identity. That means you want the 0th block to interact with the 0th block, the 1th block to interact with the 1th block, the 2th block to interact with the 2th block. If the permutation was 0 to 1, then you want the 0th block to interact with the 0th block, the 1th block to interact with the 2th block, and the 2th block to interact with the 1th block, right? That's, that's what this permutation is indicating. And now, given this, right, if you simply substitute the values here, right? So let's try to look at that, right? So uh, suppose I consider this particular cell here. So that cell is going to be i equal to 0 and j is equal to 5, right? So let me just substitute that in this, uh, this equation here, right? So i is, I'm looking at m of 0 comma 5. So what is pi of, the number of blocks is 3, so n is going to be 3, i is 0 and the sequence length is 15, right? So I am looking at pi of 0 into 3, that is going to be 0, divided by 15 is going to be 0. So I am looking at pi of 0, okay? And I am checking for this condition. What is this now? j is going to be 5, n is going to be 3, t is going to be 15. So this quantity evaluates to 1, right? 
So, pi of uh, 0 which was 0 is not equal to the right hand side. Hence, mij would not be equal to 1, it would be 0. Right? So, that is just a very uh, succinct way of capturing what is happening in the picture. If you change pi, for example, now if I tell you that I chose pi equal to 1, 0, 2, then you will immediately understand what I am trying to say. So, let me just clear up some uh, space here and then redo this. Yeah. So, I showed you how to sort of how does the formula capture what is happening in the image. Now, let me just take one more example and then <coughs> uh, convince you what is happening here. Right? So, suppose I chose pi is equal to 1, 0, 2. Right? So, in layman terms, what am I doing? The 0th block is going to interact with the 1th block. Right? So, this region is going to be non-zero. Right? then the 1th block is interacting with the 0th block. So, this is the 1th block. Okay, let me just use a different color. So, this is the 1th block. It is going to interact with the 0th block. So, this region is also going to be non-zero. Okay. And then the 2th block is going to interact with the 2th block itself. Right. So, what that says is that this is the 2th block and is going to interact with the 2th block itself. So, this region is also going to be non-zero, right? So, that is what the formula, the permutation, the picture is trying to capture. I hope it is clear now. Okay, let us move forward. So, now we are going to write Q k transpose and V into three block matrices. Uh, so, Q is Q naught, Q 1, Q 2. This is what we had done on the previous slide. Uh, k is uh, k of pi naught, right? So, what is pi 0 here? So, k uh, is the arrangement is going to be k pi of 0. So, let us look at this pi, right. So, what is the, what is pi of 0? This is 0. So, this is going to be k naught. Uh, this is going to be k of pi 1. So, this is going to be k 2 and this is going to be k of pi 2 which is going to be k 1, right. So, pi of 2 is equal to 1. That is why it is going to be k 1. So, that means q naught is going to interact with k naught. So, that means the 0th block is going to interact with the 0th block. The Q1 is going to interact with K2. So, the 1th block is going to interact with the 2th block and Q2 is going to interact with K1. So, the 2th block is going to interact with the 1th block, right. So, that is what is happening here, um, okay. And then V of course also has to follow the same thing, right, because K and V have a 1 is to 1 correspondence. So, uh, so that has to uh, go in the same manner. Okay, now, what is the computational complexity of this? So, we are doing blockwise attention. So, the first block, right? So, when I say the first block, I mean the first non black uh, part is going to be a multiplication between these matrices. So, this is a T cross 3 matrix, uh, sorry, T by 3 cross T by 3 matrix, right, which is going to get multiplied by a T by 3 cross T by 3 matrix. Okay, and then this is also a T by 3 cross matrix. So, just remember that and then we will look at the complexity. Right? So, this is going to be T by N into T by N into D right? because of this N division here and similarly all of them are going to be T by N cross T by N cross D. Right? And now there are N such blocks. So, you will have to add this N times. So, this is the same as multiplication by N. So, then you will have order t square d by n. Right? So, the original order t square d complexity has been reduced to order t square d by n as I had done on the previous slide also. Now, the larger the value of n, the more is the reduction that you are going to get. Right? And this was for one attention uh, head. You could extend the same to all the heads. You could use block, uh, block attention in all of them. So, you will get multi-head uh, block attention in that case. And as I was saying, right, so you could use different permutations in different uh, heads. So, head 1 could use the permutation identity permutation 0, 1, 2. Head 2 could use the permutation 0, 2, 1. Head 3 could use the permutation 1, 0, 2. So, then different heads are allowing different sets of tokens to interact with different uh, other subsets of tokens, right. So, then between all these heads, then you are covered, right. Some heads are attending to within themselves, 
some heads are attending to the last block, some heads are attending the first uh, block is attending to the second block. So, all of these combinations are or all of these permutations are covered across the different heads that you have. Right? Now, what happens as we increase the value of n? So, now suppose t is 32 and n is equal to 2. So, if t is 32 and n is equal to 2, then you have divided the sentence into two blocks of 16 and then say your permutation as you said is the identity permutation as written there 0 comma 1 then the first 16 tokens are attending to each other the last 16 tokens are attending to each other so instead of computing 32 cross 32 uh, elements you have computed uh, 2 into 16 cross 16 uh, elements right so this does not look like a very sparse matrix but now in this case there are 50 percent non-zero values and visually you can see that the black and white areas are equal so 50 percent is not being computed, right? But now if you had n equal to 16, that means you are taking a sentence of length six, uh, 32 and divided into 16 uh, blocks, right? So each block is very small now, uh, only two words. In that case, you will get much larger sparsity, right? And that makes sense because now your computation is going to become order t square, right? Uh, d by uh, 16, right? And now t itself was 32. Right, so, so order 32 square by 16, whereas in this case you are getting order 32 square uh, by just 2, right. So, this reduction is clearly much more than the previous reduction and that is visible from the figure also, right. So, as n, as you have more and more blocks, you are saying that my units are smaller and each unit will interact with one such other unit and across all the heads, these different units will interact with each other. Yeah, so in this case, it's 93 percent sparse. The good thing with blockwise sparsity is that it allows you to capture both local and long distances. So this is what I was saying that one of the heads is doing the identity permutation. So it's essentially the same as capturing local uh, tension. And some other block is using a different uh, sort of permutation. And then other heads are using even more different permutation. Right? So you're capturing both local attention in some heads and very long distance in other heads, right? So uh, both of those are possible in the case of uh, block uh, attention, right? Uh, and empirically it is observed again, not surprisingly, that identity permutation is more important. That means the local uh, neighborhood is all you need to attend to, right? You don't really need to attend to very, very distant words, although block wise attention allows you to do that, right? And uh, this is was some of the results that they had. Uh, so what they have done here is uh, compared a Blaze model which used full attention with a block attention, uh, the same model having block attention now and the block size was varied from n equal to 2 to n equal to 3, right? Uh, and um, this is the sequence length, I believe. Um, yeah. So it, of course, reduces the training time uh, when you are using block attention. That, of course, goes without saying. So this was taking 6.62 .6 days. Uh, now with block attention, you're going 5.8 days, right? So it's uh, some 12.5 percent. Uh, when you have larger uh, sequence lengths, you get even larger reduction with uh, block attention. Uh, the memory requirements also decrease. But then what you see is like a slight drop in the performance, right? So perplexity, the lower the better. So the original model had a lower perplexity uh, than when you have larger block attention, right? Like or rather larger number of blocks, and that's expected because the larger the number of blocks, the more is the sparse is the attention matrix. That means more connections you are ignoring, right? And that would of course lead to a drop as compared to allowing everyone to attend to everything, right? So that's that's sort of expected. Uh, yeah. So this is all about uh, block attention. Uh, now I'll end this video here, and we'll come back and look at a couple of other attention mechanisms.